Bartenders of Reddit, what is the strangest conversation you've ever overheard because people assume sound doesn't travel over the bar? A customer is on the phone in the middle of the bar. Not too crowded but a long bar. Guy couldn't have been more than 25. I go to help someone at the end of the bar and on my way back I overhear. No. I don't care. She's my sister. She is 13 and there is no reason she should be doing coke. At all. Gave him a few drinks on the house that night. A woman was planning her dog's birthday party. And was debating which dogs to invite since some of the dogs didn't get along with her dog. You can pick your dog and you can pick your friends. But you can't pick your dog's friends. These siblings, aged 50-60s, arguing over there, not even dead and in fact present at the table, mother's will and who gets what. It ended in a heated argument and the sun speeding off. That's horrible. Had someone yell RIP Olivia Newton John and I interjected that she wasn't dead. Big mistake. Drum kitty had got on one of those drum loops about how I was wrong until we closed 20 minutes later. I even showed him on my phone that she wasn't dead and he said you can google anything. Edit, for those speculating what my response was should have been. I just kept saying you're allowed to be wrong, as he kept on about it until I locked the door. Back when you kept a newspaper on the bar. Guy walks in and goes straight for the paper. Looks in one section then the other. Places paper down. I asked him if he found what he was looking for. And he said no. His ex isn't dead or in jail. Then he asked for a beer. I've heard discussions on if my bobs were real. Listen to a couple in an open marriage and apparently be sexual scout out the picking for the evening. Listen to tons of people telling their so that they were working late. One guy even met a date later. Listen to a couple have a very intense whispered argument about custody. I assumed a kid. Turned out to be a cat. Listen to a couple guys plan how to rob me. Bartending was fun I miss it sometimes. I overheard a woman who worked for a New Zealand online dating service. And was basically a profile sensor. She described her job as being 80% big dick big removal. And had seen so many big dicks she could divvy them up into a few distinct categories. I, a dude, have a very similar job. And can confirm. Honestly though. Compared to the other things I have to remove. Big dick pics are like the best case scenario in my day. On Valentine's Day this year. We had a guest who accepted a FaceTime from his girlfriend while his side chick was with him at the bar. He angled the phone so his girlfriend wouldn't see the girl. But it was so obvious. These three middle aged women, alone at the bar, discussing in excruciating detail their sexual fantasies. Which seemed to include sucking off a younger man. I was 22 at the time. They obviously knew I could hear them but it was so awkward. I stood there cutting the hell out of lemons and limes. I'll share mine real quick. Two girls sitting at the bar. Otherwise the place is empty. They start discussing the details and numbers of abortions the one girl has had. Not terribly offensive to me or anything. But I certainly didn't expect to hear about it at work when I came in. Otherwise the good ones come from a game of hypotheticals called make it or break it. Essentially. You have your perfect romantic sexual partner. Everything about them is perfect. Except for one flaw. And you have to decide if it's a deal breaker. My favorite one is make it or break it, she's your perfect woman. But she tells you after you've been dating for a while. That one time she ducked her dog. I think make it. What if she tells you it happened more than once? I don't know dude. Probably still make it if she's perfect. What if it was your dog she ducked? Do duck that itch. That's my ducking dog man. Edit. Holy hell I did not expect this comment or this post to blow up the way they did. Coolio. Thanks for the gold. Once this older couple, 55ish, were talking about their bedroom problems. The guy clearly had impotence issues and the lady kept complaining that she was feeling frustrated because he was frustrated. And Viagra wasn't really helping. Or at least not helping enough. Let's just say that other people around them weren't as comfortable as them about the conversation. 
Two businessmen having after work drinks on a Friday. Where the conversation built up to one of the sweetest sentiments I've heard. At first the usual them tell ya. You're a good person. I love you man. Later on, still fairly basic, duck the wives. Hey. You and me. We buy motorcycles. To finally this gym. If a tornado were to blow you away, I would fly after you. Even though we were busy, I clearly heard a woman say to her friend, Hey look, the bartender's really cute. Friend, no he's not. Response, oh yeah, you're right. I worked in a bar in a truck stop and we got lots of solo men. Guy on bar still says the government can track our every move. Now they are putting chips in newborns right at the hospital. The trucker next to him who he just met shakes his head and says. Yeah. I know. Both were serious as could be and talked with each other about how the world is messed up. It was the second trucker's response that got me. Not me. As I'm a cook. But a bartender I worked with and was good friends with overheard a regular that was a businessman who traveled to China often bragging about getting underage hookers while there. Made sure to tell everyone who knew him about it. I once listened to three people have an in-depth discussion about how they were going to heal the local vampire and the steps to take to protect themselves from the coven that said vampire is surely from. My favorite though was a heated debate over whether the first Robin would be a crime fighter if Batman hadn't picked him up and trained him. I once heard a guy tell his buddy. It's fun. It's like laser tag but with real gums that was 20 years ago and to this day kick myself for not getting the whole story. Was visiting my mom at work once, she tends bar, and heard her making conversation across the bar with a patron. Suddenly. Over the music. I hear the guy slam his fist onto the bar and yell you. Off actually. Wrong. He immediately facaplanted on the bar. And his buddy had to carry him out of there. My mom was just commenting on the fact that the song that was playing was country. This guy was going through a divorce and his buddy was consoling him. He kept saying he'd never find someone as kinky as her. His buddy tried to tell him plenty of people are kinky. To which he replies. You don't get it dude. She used to blow our dog while we ducked. One time I walked out to the patio to have a smoke break into three people all talking very drunkenly but also very seriously about theoretical physics. Edit, if anyone is worried it was the bit happened in Dayton, Ohio. I bartended at a country club. And there was this one group of tennis ladies that would always sit at the bar and get absolutely it faced on weeknights at our wine nights. They took a liking to our main bartender and kept calling him exotic, he's Mexican. They would say how love his beard. Would talk about their fav, not tennis related, positions. How they kept their nether regions tidy. Slip him their numbers. How sheep their husbands were. ETC. Gave me death glares every time I'd be bartending bar backing with him lol. Work in a downtown hotel bar right across from our convention center. I've heard way too many negotiations between businessmen and escorts. Last one I heard involved the guy asking the lady how much extra she would charge to let his friend watch. She said it was $200 to watch. $500 if he joins in. I've bartended but my favorite conversation was overhead while I was on the other side of the bar. Look all I'm saying is Grand Theft Auto severely ruined our generation's perception of how many police helicopters exist. Sounded like they were getting really heated over the matter haha. <laughs> Guy, I think I'm going to need a coke chaser for this one. Girl. Presumably so, we already did all the coke. Guy, coca cola. You idiot. Not even the most memorable. Just the most recent. For sure. A real snapshot into their relationship. Had a husband and wife who were by far the most rude people I've ever encountered. Talking with a traveling businessman. By the end of the night the businessman was propositioning the woman to go back to his hotel room for some money. The husband responded for $500 you can let him have now. I heard some chick say and the worst part about it. Is that lucky bastard got a whole gram of crystal out it for free. 
I once heard a guy talking to his buddy about how he likes to have sex with both a female and male at the same time and likes to lick up the after effects of the male orgasm off of her. Everyone's got their preferences but that was not something I expected to hear. Tinder date. Dude bragging about his big big dick to a woman who actually said take me to the bathroom and show me. I waited about a minute after they went into the bathroom. Then walked in on them and said my big dick is bigger. Now get out here. Settle your tab. And take that sheet elsewhere. They tip me 30%. Was a bartender at a hotel bar. Had all sorts of interesting folks come through. One time a group of guys. Of varying ages. All came down and took the biggest table. No big deal. It was a slow night. They proceeded to reach in their bags and set up a game of Dungeons and Dragons and start playing. Accents and all. I distinctly remember something about Bob the Necromancer. The other guests thought it was funny and interesting. So I figured no harm no foul. Let them play all night. Later in the night. The same guy's still playing. We witnessed some guy with a gold robot head made of cardboard go running by the main window of the bar. He was wearing the gold robot head. Shits. And nothing else. The cops arrived shortly after and we all had to give statements. The cops proceeded to interrogate me about the Dant players because they like to dress up in weird costumes. Right? I told the cops that the guys hadn't left the table all night. One member of the adventuring party bid the cops farewell. In character. Another time I had a camera crew show up and start setting up. They were apparently with some ghost hunting show and were checking to see if we were haunted. I guess the owner had put them up to it, no press is bad press, so I let them do their thing. Apparently we were super haunted, not the exact words they used. But the episode never made it to air. They ended up finding a secret crawl space which was pretty cool. But it was completely empty. Well. I'm not a bartender. But I once went to a very loud Cuban dance party, in a church. If it matters, and was trying poorly to chat with a lovely young lady and she was screamed talking to her friend when the music suddenly stopped at the end of the song and in that half second of silence she hollered out I don't care I just want to get laid. I thought that was a good sign. Since she was clearly talking about me. Which was unusual. Made it back to her place and she showed me her angel sticks. Dorky things you pull out and they have a word that describes you. I got forgiving. And she concentrated really hard then pulled out efficient and burst into tears and locked herself in the bathroom. I let myself out. Ex bartender. Guy who worked for Von Miller, linebacker for the Denver Broncos, was a regular and would sit at my bar. Heard many things about Von's life that humanized him to me instead of him being some superstar. A lady. Her weird boyfriend. And the girl's sister at my bar. When the girl went to the bathroom. Her sister scooted in towards him and was saying they should get out of there before her sister gets out of the bathroom and go get a motel. They both must have seen something I didn't because this dude was ugly. I work in a hotel bar. There's a couple that comes in every Monday. The kicker is that they're not married to each other. The woman got drunk and asked the guy if he thought about her when he ducked his wife. This will probably get buried in the comments. And it's not the strangest conversation. But definitely the coolest I ever had. I was bartending at a hotel bar in a historical district of a vacation town. We had quite a few semi-celebrities come through and it was pretty cool getting to meet them. But it was a regular thing. Never really got starstruck. Then. A guy started coming in every couple of months and always wore a Marshall University hat. I always just assumed he was alumni or fan. But once I got to know him I found out it was much deeper than that. He played for the Marshall football team that the movie We Are Marshall depicted. He was on the team the year after the horrific plane crash that held the majority of the team. Me being a huge fan of the movie and the story behind it. We talked about it and his personal experience with the whole thing for hours. It was crazy impressive what all he and that team went through. Not only was he one of the nicest gentlemen I have met, but he was genuinely compassionate to a lot of the older folks that came through while he was there. He always went out of his way to open doors. 
pulls chairs out for random strangers. And really just made the bar an enjoyable place to be when he was there with his friendly conversations with everyone. Like I said he only came in every few months. So he found out my last shift was going to be around the next time he was in town and told me he'd be there to have a drink with me. My last shift he walks in and surprised me with a Marshall University football autograph with a short note by Red Dawson. Who was the coach that much of the movie was based on. And a signed copy of the movie. It's now on display in my living room and I love when people ask about it and I get to tell the story. Not a bartender. But I love hanging out on the riverfront and sounds travels quite well there. I overheard the gentlemen that were hanging out near me discussing whether to rob me or not. Not a bartender but I heard two girls discussing how the bartender, who was easily within listening distance, would be attractive if he wasn't fat. Then they went on to joke about how he probably takes so many bathroom breaks because he is stuffing his face with fries in the back room. They were drunk and loud and weren't looking in his direction. I don't know if they realized he was so close by. The bartender was looking over and clearly listening in. But when he saw that I noticed what was going on he just got red in the face. Poor guy. A girl was telling her friend that she likes the curve of her boyfriend's pen 15 and when he does her from behind and grabs her bobs. It's the best thing ever. They were two of maybe five people in the whole bar and she got quiet when I re-entered the bar from the kitchen. I heard every word and it was only more awkward for me that she began talking quietly instead of waiting to have the conversation when there weren't people to hear it. I guess it isn't actually the strangest but it was the most awkward. Chefs, what red flags do you look for when you go out to eat? If I see Gordon Ramsay eating with the camera crew at the same restaurant I'm in. By my guy. My first boss was an ice cream. Dunno. He made ice cream. He had a nasty as kitchen and stuff I would never eat because I know just how old that cookie really is. And I've seen how he makes that chili. Ick. Yeah. Chili and ice cream. I don't know. It was a weird time. So when he told me never to eat at the place across the street. You know it was bad. Really. Really bad. His criteria happened to be knowing the health inspector and how often that guy shut a place down. And what for? Not a chef but a 15 year server. If the servers take 10 plus min to greet the table when the restaurant isn't full. It has always been a poor experience overall. It tells me nobody is managing the entire restaurant correctly. And that carries over to food. I'm sure others have said this but the general smell not only can smell deter me from visiting a restaurant but the restaurant I work at recently had our pipes replaced and the dining room smelled of raw sewage for about two weeks. We lost a lot of business because of it. Edit, thanks for all the love guys. I just quickly typed this out while on the toilet at 4am. My life is exciting. I worked as a food runner and bus boy for a summer. It changed how I view the food industry and how empathetic I am to workers in it. However. I will not tolerate bad smells. If the restaurant smells bad. I bail. There is probably more sheet that is unacceptable. But that's the first thing that always comes to mind. I worked as a server and occasional line cook for several years. Number one red flag is the spouts on the soda fountain. Those things are one of the easiest things to clean in the entire place. So if they're mildewy that hills my interest in eating there. I'm fine with a bit of mess elsewhere. Especially in a high volume place since it will get messy over the course of the day. But those spouts take multiple days of no washing to get to a point where they are not notably disgusting. Kinda backwards. But if your server recommends something that isn't the highest priced thing on the menu. Appetizer or entree. You should probably get it. You best bet it's their personal preference. But they eat that food daily. As do us cooks. And if we can eat it after weeks months of cooking serving it. It's probably worth your time. Exactly. I always recommend my favorite things instead of the $25 steak they want me to push. Edit. Most other items on the menu are $10.15. The steak is the most expensive thing we have. Not a chef. 
but having a menu that has too many options makes me question what goes into making those meals and how fresh they are. If you have a pack 20 page menu with Mexican food and American food and pizza and pastas and Asian fusions dishes. What am I getting when I order something random like beef stew or steak? They have this restaurant near me called Mike's Place and they legitimately have too many items on their menu. They have like 50 items per page on 4 pages. It makes me question what I am eating a little bit. But the food is so damn good that I still eat it. Edit, this is the one in Kent. Ohio. My friend was a chef and he told me. Unless they're Greek. If you can hear the chefs yelling in the kitchen. Get out. If they're fighting they're messing up the food. I never thought to ask him about the Greek exception. Italian too. God are my bosses loud. All siblings. All can be heard talking from anywhere. Sometimes during a fast moment in the back someone gets pissed and yells at the people in the back to shut the duck up cause they can't hear the waitress 2 inches from them. I ask the waiter what they like to eat off the menu. If they don't have something a sap and they aren't new. Bounce. The answer will be what everyone else likes on the menu. You might not like my real favorite. But you'll probably like the most popular dish. The most popular dishes tend to be basic or unhealthy. A big one is definitely an empty parking lot during lunch and dinner. If the entire town is skipping out. You should too. I have a caveat on that one. My ex was training to be a chef. And her restaurant was open 3 nights a week, and every weekdays for lunch. Thursday. Friday and Saturday. It was completely full every Fridays and Saturdays. But on Thursdays it often only had less than 10 people throughout the whole night. So I guess my point is that it's true if that's the case every day or so. But sometimes there are just not many customers. The great French chef Fernand Point left us some advice. If I go somewhere new and the chef is very thin. I know my meal will be bad. If he is both thin and sad. I leave as quickly as possible. I rely more on the sad thing than the thin thing. If I walk into a restaurant and I can feel sadness and anger from the staff I leave. Not a chef. But a restaurant manager for circa 10 years until I left the industry last year. Obviously I'm extremely aware of these red flags. As it was my job to notice them for a decade. To name a few. Huge menus. Dirty tables. Exhausted anxious looking waiting staff. No cocktail menu. Beer tastes odd. No beer ciders on tap. No one greets you at the door. Odd atmosphere. Dead plants. Overhearing waiting staff saying I'm sorry that's not actually on the menu tonight. Intros listing specials when sap that takes longer than 30 sex. Over friendly overbearing staff. Saddle looking chefs of an open kitchen. Inappropriate and consistent to loud no playlist. A personal hate of mine. Anything that mentions a chef's name in the menu. Pete's chicken special. Menu descriptors that don't describe what food you're having. This is kind of inexhaustible. Not gonna lie. Sometimes. Though. You just want a McDonald's. Was a chef. Flies. Anywhere in the restaurant. Screams bad food waste handling procedures. Also. The employees gathering in groups to gossip in view of customers. Rather than do their duties. Or at least look busy. If you have time to lean. Fish on the Sunday brunch menu. It got there Thursday and they are trying to get rid of it before it spoils. If the dish is fish with hollandaise do not eat it. The fish is more than likely bad and they are hiding the smell with the hollandaise. For me it would be front of the house knowing the menu. A good chef will have people taste all dishes and specials through training so they can describe it to customers. If I ask a waiter or waitress what's in something or how it tastes and they go let me ask the kitchen. Never mind. I'm good. Line cook chiming in here. 1. Don't knock places with microwaves. All the stuff that goes into mics, at least at my place, is just heating up sauces, mac and cheese base, caramel etc or warming up the rice for a minute. 2. Definitely look at the employees. You'll be able to tell if the food is gonna good or not. 
solely based on body language. 3. Don't get things that are out of place. Example, don't get the fish and chips at a sports bar, in the states Canada at least. I'm not a chef. But I am pretty critical on the quality of the utensils. If there are food residue or if it feels sticky. I'm going to have a chat with the owner of the restaurant. Dirty bathroom dirty kitchen. It's a phrase for a reason. I don't agree with that. Chefs are in charge of the kitchen. Cleaning staff clean the facilities. At a restaurant I worked in a few years ago. The cleaner was really diligent and religiously made sure everything was spotless. Chef was lazy as duck though. Didn't even clean the grill after service. Plates with chips. Large cracks. In them is a big indicator for me. Those chips host a lot of germs and if the restaurant isn't throwing them away then they are probably slacking in other areas of food safety. My mom was a chef. Maybe this is just me being too much of a bull buster but when I go to a restaurant the bread basket, if they serve one, is somewhat an indicator of the meal to come. What really shows me that this restaurant is doing the bare minimum is if they serve frozen packaged tabs of butter. Give me some tapenade. Chili oil. Hummus. Whipped butter. Compound butters. Hell even a decent olive oil on a plate would suffice. Just no frozen packaged tabs of butter I need to warm up by keeping it between my hands for 5 minutes. As a chef it is always important for me to eat at a locally owned and operated establishment instead of a massive mega corp restaurant. There. Even if you possibly have a poor experience you are at least supporting your community. Also I believe you greatly improve your chances of having a delicious meal made from the heart. Rather than a plate designed for max profit in a boardroom. My grandpa always swore the quality of the restaurant was based on how many calendars were on the walls. Lots of calendars equals good place to eat. He also wouldn't go fishing if all the cows were laying down. If the daily special consists of items found in the standard menu it's probably not fresh and they're trying to get rid of old stock. Aprons. If I see anyone with an apron on and they're heading to the bathroom. Or if they take it off and set it on a table or booth. They're probably not too conscious about cleanliness. They touch that apron a lot. And then touch your food. If the plate is extremely hot. Your order has been sitting in the window for an extended period of time. Meaning it's already pretty dried out and the cooks and cooking to order. Nothing dangerous. Just a bit of a turn off. The cleanliness of the dining room. Including the floors. If they aren't keeping a decently clean or sweeping the floors in the areas you are. Just imagine what the areas you don't see look like. Edit, in all the restaurants I've cooked in. The plates were never kept extremely hot or in a hot box. They are usually kept at room temperature or a little above. I have been told time and again that this is because although a hot plate would keep the food warm longer. It also runs the risk of injuring a customer. The rule was always that if a plate is too hot for the server to carry it. The expo should switch out the plate. This is why I said extremely hot. Not just hot or warm. Massive menus. A good restaurant, specifically finer dining, will not crouch on a large menu, but will have a consistent one, maybe a page or two. Bigger menus usually mean that some items won't get ordered as often, and will have been likely sitting. Especially if they are on the menu, that is, lower cost. Edit, big menus can be very appropriate in context, such as those of ethnically specific restaurants. I've been to my share of Indian, Thai, and Japanese that had extensive menus, but expertly prepared dishes. This is mostly feasible though because a small number of ingredients are usually used in many dishes, such as rice or chicken. 